Welcome to Learn to Crochet with Mincat. Today is lesson eight. And as I told you last time, I want to show you how to make a pot holder. This is the pot holder I want to show you how to make. And I know it looks really complicated now that you look at it. You know, there's all these little fold overs and color changes, but it's actually a really, really simple pattern. It just has a nice effect because you fold it over and connect it um, after you're done crocheting it. So I have a link to the pattern in the description of the video. Um, you want to open the pattern and look at it, maybe read through it. Um, I have printed mine out so I can look at it. If you're sitting at the computer and doing it, you might not have to print it out. You can just look at it on the screen and follow the video. And at the end, I hope you will have something that looks like this. So I used the blue and the green that I showed you in the last video. It's again the Bernat Handicrafter cotton. Um, because cotton just works really well for pot holders, for dishcloths, for anything that might have to be washed. This one, since it's a pot holder, it has to have some heat resistance. Um, acrylic would not be able to stand up to the heat of a hot pot or pan. So you definitely want to use a yarn that has heat resistance and cotton is really good for that. So let's get started. The materials we need for today is a size G or four millimeter crochet hook. Two colors of yarn. I'm going to be using blue and green. The pattern tells you to use yellow and white. You can use any colors you want. You just need two different colors. So I have blue and green. I'll be using these. Um, we'll also need a tapestry or yarn or darning needle. Again, with a blunt end to sew in our ends. And of course, scissors to cut our yarn. So I'm going to start with my blue. This will be my main color. Um, it suggests yellow and white in the pattern, but I'm using blue and green. So blue will be what they call yellow in the pattern. Um, the pattern says starting with the yellow yarn, so I'm starting with the blue, chain four and slip stitch to form a ring. So we will chain four. One, two, three, four, and then we'll slip stitch into the first one to form a ring. This is our ring that we're starting with. Four chain stitches and slip stitch together. And then we chain three, which counts as the first double crochet and then 13 double crochet in the ring. So I'm gonna work into the middle of this ring, not into the chain stitches, but right into the center, and do 13 double crochet. Thirteen. And now it says slip stitch, in top of chain three. So this is my one, two, three. So I'll go into the top one and slip stitch to join. So this is 13 double crochet plus the chain three, which counts as another one. So it's 14 joined with a slip stitch. Now the next round says chain 23, skip next double crochet, slip stitch in next double crochet. So we're going to chain 23, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Now we're going back to the circle. We'll skip the next double crochet, this one, and work into this slip stitch into this one to connect. This is the base for the first petal. Now the pattern says chain 23, skip one DC, slip stitch in next DC, repeat another four times. So we're going to do five more of these and then I'll meet you again. All 
All right, so now we have one, two, three, four repeats, plus the first two that were written out in the pattern. So six total. And then it says, chain 23, slip stitch at base of the first petal. So we'll chain another 23 and then slip stitch right here into the base. And now we slip stitch into the base where the first petal comes out. So now we have our starting circle as well as seven of these petal chains. This is what it looks like so far. All right, and now the next round or row says, row one, one single crochet in each of the first 11 chains of the first petal, three single crochet in next chain, top of first petal, one is C in each of the last 11 chains of the first petal for 25 stitches. So we're gonna do one single crochet up, then three in the top, and then one all the way down. And then it says repeat for each of the remaining petals all the way around. So I will show you this for the first petal. So we go into the first chain right here. Do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's the first eleven single crochet. Now we need three single crochet and one. So we'll do one, two, three in the top, and then we'll do another 11 to get back down on the other side of the petal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So these are the stitches for the first petal. And then it says repeat for each of the remaining petals all of the way around. So we'll go right into the first chain of the next petal, right down here. There's the first one. And do a single crochet. And I'll do it all the way around until I get back to the first petal. And 11, that was the last stitch in row one. And it looks like this right now. So all the petals have 25 stitches on them. Looks a bit confusing right now, but it'll get much easier later. We'll just keep going here. Now pattern says for row two, change to white yarn. So in our case, that would be the green yarn. So let's take our green yarn. And we did color changes last time. So we know how to do this. We're just gonna do a slip knot into a yarn. Slip it on our hook, pull it through, and pull the blue tight so it doesn't fall off. We're going to leave the blue there because we'll, we'll need it later again. But now we'll be working with the green. And the pattern says, one SC in each of the first 12 SC of first petal, three SC in next SC, top of petal, one SC in each of the remaining 12 SC in the first petal. Repeat for each of the remaining petals all the way around. So last time we did 11, 3, 11. So now we're gonna do 12, 3, 12. Pretty much the same way. I'm gonna show you again for the first petal. Here's a first stitch, first single crochet. Gonna place another single crochet in there. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And now we're at the top of the petal. This is the second one, the middle one of the three we did in the first row. And now we're going to do another three in here. One, two, three, and now 12 stitches to get back down to the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. That was the first petal. We're just building up the size for it. And we're going to do the same thing all the way around for all the other petals. And the next stitch is already the first stitch of the next petal. So we'll just keep working right around it. Another 12, 3, 12, and that for all of the petals all the way around. All right, so this is going to be our 12th stitch, the last one. But since in our next row, we're going to change back to the blue one or yellow as it says in the pattern, but we're using blue. Um, I want to do a color change here again. We talked about this in the last video, but I'm just going to show it to you again. So to do a clean color change, insert your hook, pull a loop. Don't finish the single crochet off with this yarn, but pick up your new color yarn. And finish your single crochet. And this way, when you start your next stitch, it's going to be fully in the new color but the old stitch is fully in the old color. There we go. So I already made one stitch. Um, the next row says change to yellow yarn. In our case, that's blue, which we just did. Um, one single crochet in each of the first 13 single crochet of first petal, three single crochet in the next, and then one single crochet in each of the remaining 13. So as you can see, we're just increasing by one for each side. So it started with 11, then it was 12. Now it's going to be 13. So we're going to do 13 all the way up, 3 in the top, 13 all the way down, and we're going to repeat that for all 7 petals all the way around. And I'll meet you on the other side. Alright, and I've gone all the way around. It's time to switch to the other yarn again. Um, row 4 tells us change to white yarn, which in our case, or in my case, is the green yarn, the second color. So I'll do a color change again. And do row 4 in green. Now row four tells us um, pretty much the same thing we just did. Just now we did 13 single crochet, then three in the top and 13 down. Now we're going to do 14 single crochet, three in the top and 14 down. So since it's pretty much the same uh, principle that we've been using the whole way around, I'm not going to show this all to you. I'm assuming you know what to do. So just do 14 stitches up, three in the top and then 14 back down and then I'll meet you at the other end again. All right, and this was the last row and it tells us to fasten off. Um, since we're gonna need the other color for finishing off, I will pick up the other color again, which in this case is my blue, and then I'll fasten off the green. There we go. Fasten off my green. And now before I start the shaping, which it's not mentioned in the tutorial, but if you shape it now, um, it'll be really hard to get back to these ends that you have on the back. So I'm going to sew these in right now. Um, just these three, the blue one stays, and then we're going to do the shaping. 
which um, it, it looks more complicated than it is. Once you know what to do, it's actually really easy to do. The pattern doesn't explain it quite that well, but it's really easy once you get the hang of it. But first I'm gonna sew in my ends here. Just weave them right into my stitches. anchor them so they don't come back out. It's just that these um, spots where it is are a little bit hard to access after you've shaped it. So it's just easier to get rid of these ends before and then we can finish it off really neatly. So here's the other green one. Which I'm threading through these green stitches. So you won't be able to see it in the end, hopefully. All right. And the last one is the blue one, the starting tail. Which I'm going to just put into this ring of double crochet stitches. cut off and then we'll get to the shaping. So our pattern says work from the right side, which is the front that we have been working on. Fold each petal over, gently twist each one to the left, spreading and flattening to create the shape. So I'm going to lay this down now and actually I'm going to show you first before I lay it down because it's a bit hard to see once I lay it down. So basically what this means is you take a petal and you twist it to the left. That's all you really do and then flatten it and you do it with all of your petals to align them to create the shape. It's much easier once you see it. So I'm going to lay it down and do this now. I already did this for the first three to show you. There we go and just twist them to the side. Twist it over and flatten and shape it. Okay, there we go. I want to pull these a bit to make them all about the same size. There we go. And this is approximately what it will look like after you've done the twisting. And now we want to attach these petals together so they stay together like this. So we need our thread again, which is right here. Okay, I'm trying not to untwist them. So here is the thread. Now we want to work this up to this one. Actually, it's probably easier if I take it off. Let's see. Should be even or something. No, they shouldn't. Like this. Okay. No, I can't do that. Alright, so now we went all the way around with the green yarn or whatever color you're using and I cut it off and I'm going to sew it in. I'm also going to sew in all the other ends that I have here. I still have the blue attached so I'm going to cut it off. And all ends that you have on the back, just weave them in right now because it'll be um, harder to access those spots later after we've done the shaping. Alright, so I've woven in all my ends. And now I go back to the right side and our pattern says 
working from the right side, fold each petal over, gently twist each one to the left, spreading and flattening to create the shape. So it sounds a bit complicated when you see this because it's just a big mess of petals, but it's actually pretty easy. So you are on the right side. They're already twisting a bit on their own, so that makes it easier. You're on the right side, you take a petal and you twist it to the left and then flatten it down to lay nicely. And then you do the same thing with the next one. Fold it to the left and then flatten it to create the shape. And again, this one, fold it to the left and then shape and flatten. There you go. And I'm going to do this all the way around. I'm just going to have to lay it down to do that because it's a bit hard to do it when I'm holding it in your hand. Just folding to the left and then flattening. Some of them already fall over to the left on their own. There we go. And then flatten it. And we can already see that this is the shape we kind of want to have in the end. All right, so we've mostly shaped this. Um, now we want to anchor the petals together. Our pattern says, using the yellow yarn, crochet two petals together at the tip of the fold, and then single crochet trim around it. Again, putting three in the top. So we want to crochet these folds together to anchor them. Um, the pattern doesn't specify, but I find it looks best if you have an even number of stitches on all sides. And for me, it works best with a seventh stitch. So this is my top stitch right here. And I want to count down to the seventh. That's where I'll connect it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is the seventh. This is the one I want to connect. And I'll do the same thing on the next petal. This is my top stitch. Um, sometimes it's a bit hard to see which one is your top stitch. Just turn it around back to the front. And then you can see these three stitches are in that top and the middle one is going to be your top stitch so since you have the pe petal turned around it looks like it's a little bit over to this side but this is the top stitch right here so from there i count one two three four five six that makes this one the seventh stitch so i want to connect these two and i'm going to start with my blue yarn i'm going to start with a slip knot again since I'm reattaching the yarn. So slip knot, slip it on my hook, pull it through both stitches. Gonna anchor it with a slip stitch or a chain stitch in this case, anchoring it, pulling tight so it stays there. And then I'm just gonna put a single crochet right into the same two stitches to connect them. There we go. So now these two are connected and I'm going to work six stitches up, then my three, six stitches down and then connect to the next petal. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm at the top so I need three stitches in here. One, two, three, and another six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I want to connect the seventh stitch. So I'm slipping in that. And then I pick up the next petal. If it's unraveled itself, sometimes it happens that it just opens from the fold. Just fold it back around the left side and count down. Again, this is my top stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven into the seventh stitch and single crochet. So they're now attached together. And I'm going to do this all the way around. So always six stitches, then the top stitch, another six, and then connect the seventh stitch on both sides. And we're going to go all the way around like this. And then I'll meet you on the other end. All right, and now I'm back to the start. I did the same stitches all the way around. I'm gonna connect it with a slip stitch to my first to join the trim. 
and cut it off. Snip. Fasten. And there we go. Now you need to flatten it a little bit to get the shape to lay down, but you can see this is the flower pot holder. And of course if you use it to put a hot pot on it, it'll automatically flatten it more to get this pattern to lay down nicely. Right now it's standing up a little bit. Um, you can also iron it or steam iron it to get it to lay down flatter. And it has the same look on both sides. Now all we have to do is weave in these two ends and then we are done. This is uh, one of those works that looks more complicated in the result than it actually is. They're all really basic stitches. The only thing that's a little bit complicated is the folding over, but once you get the hang of it, it's really easy. You just fold the um, petal over to the left once. And I do recommend counting your stitches so you have an even number of stitches between all petals. Um, the pattern doesn't specify this, but if you just do it wherever, it might look a bit wonky on the sides if you don't connect it in the same stitch every time. And it makes it easier to connect too because all you have to do really is to count and flip the petal to the left. And it's easier than just laying it down and finding, okay, where do I connect this and where do I connect that? So this is an example of a pattern that gives you a really nice, neat looking result, um, but is still really easy to do for beginners. And depending on how ambitious you are, you can of course do more complicated patterns and just try to find your way through it, especially if they have a lot of pictures, it's relatively easy to figure out more complicated patterns. But yeah, this is our flower pot holder with color changes. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And the learn to crochet lessons are over with this. I'm going to start um, learn to crochet amigurumi now, which is working in the round little dolls. I'm going to pick some really easy patterns for that and just show you how to work in the round, how to decrease without big holes um, between the stitches and how to finish off your work. So if you want to join me for that, I'll start that next week. And for now, enjoy your flower pot holder. Thanks for joining me.